State of Affairs is honored to uh, welcome our good friend, Assemblywoman Shavonda Sumter, a Democrat uh, representing what area of the state? 35th District, Patterson, Northern New Jersey. And uh, in fact, have a title and leadership of the Democratic Party, which is? Majority Conference Leader of the New Jersey General Assembly. You dedicated much of your life, not just in the legislature, but uh, as a leader at a major health care system. You are, uh, in fact, Vice President of Hackensack UMC, Mountainside Hospital. Much of your focus is on infant um, mortality rates, yes. particularly in the black community. Five times higher than Five whites? Five times higher. One of the highest in the country, just in New Jersey alone. And because? Because we, for... I will say this, our health commissioner has uh, taken a concerted effort in our First Lady. Dr. Elna Hall. Dr. Elna Hall, First Lady Tammy Murphy. That's right. Has really taken this under their belt. Since the 90s, we've been in the high, high ranks of infant immortality for African American women, five times higher. Shouldn't happen. A mother shouldn't have to worry about losing her life and the life of her child uh, upon birth, low birth rates. And we have a, a sundry of issues that really fall into that, and, uh, not only as a health care professional, but as a majority conference leader, as a vice chair of the Legislative Black Caucus. We really focused on this initiative. By the way, uh, folks, we'll put up our website right now for an initiative we've been working on for about a year now. It's called Right From The Start NJ focusing on infants and toddlers and those who care for them. Assemblywoman, what does the state need to do more to help protect infants and toddlers and those who care for them? Oh, Steve, thank you for asking that question. Uh, we need to put money with this, so I am pleased that in the governor's proposed budget, $1 million will be dedicated to doulas. We're talking about a relationship with health care professionals for this um, community. Excuse me for interrupting. Sure. Explain who and what doulas are. So doulas are birthing coaches for women who may not have a birthing coach or may not know the questions to ask of their professionals and how to talk to professionals who are caring for them during that sensitive time when they're pregnant. Um, what questions to ask their health care professional. There's something that we learned, uh, which is implicit bias. As much as we teach cultural sensitivity right. in the health care setting, in fact, we do annual trainings, there's still a language gap where African-American mothers are not being heard, whether they're professionals, whether they're in poverty or low-wage earners. We need to make sure that their voices are clear uh, when they're in the sensitive birthing time and that healthcare professionals do not ignore all the complications and questions that they have. So doulas will help support them through that in a healthy lifestyle to carry to full term. There's a bias involved in there, Senator? There is. Explain a, that to us. Give us an example there, of what that looks there's like. There's an absolute bias and absolute uh, racism um, connected with an African-American mother giving birth. There is a, a blind spot to the stigmas and traumas that they may face leading up into the birthing cycle poverty, low wage earning, child care for children who may be at home, access to transportation mm -hmm. just to get to appointments. Social determinants of health. Social determinants of health, classic examples. And for decades at this point, we've ignored those factors, which has led to us having the highest rates of infant and mother immortality in the state of New wow. Jersey, in all of the states, in our entire country. We're number 48. And I'm embarrassed. Out of 50 states. Out of 50 states. I'm embarrassed that we're number 48. And we can actually do something to mm. change this. Ironically, number 48 in that area, but New Jersey is considered, behind Connecticut, the second wealthiest state Correct. in the nation. So, so we have to work on this issue. Let's talk about this. Um, I'm curious about, when you talk about the governor's budget, the governor has called for raising taxes on millionaires last year. The budget called for raising taxes on people who earn over $5 million a year. What do you think of raising taxes on those who earn a million bucks or more? So the, the hard part for me, uh, Steve, is the wealth gap and the disparity in the wealth gap in New Jersey. Uh, the poverty rates have increased and the wealth gap has increased. So you have folks who are in that middle class, which is shrinking, that can't give anymore. You can't get blood from a stone. So we really have to look at those earners, which we're talking about approximately 18,000 millionaires that can contribute to the health and the equality, the equitable gap in our state, considering the wealth that's in our state. It makes sense to you. It, it makes sense to me that- You worry we, about losing some of them? You worry about losing some of those millionaires who say, you know what, <clears throat> I don't have to stay here. I'm gonna go to Florida, which you know does not in fact have an income tax. Steve. I'm out of here, and then you lose all that revenue? Steve, they have options. 
a lot of folks here in New Jersey don't have options. New Jersey is home. I, I know folks, especially in my district and throughout the state, who can't just pick up and go. They only have one home. They don't have two homes. Right. They don't have two zip codes. They can't establish residence they in some other state. They can't establish residency in some other state, some other country. No tax shelter. How much more can we give? And the federal impact of not having your property tax covered mm. is devastating to folks who are house wealthy in the state of New Jersey. So something has to give. We're talking with Assemblywoman Shavonda Sumter, who is... Uh, uh, a leader in the Democratic Party uh, in the uh, Assembly, uh, represents Patterson. Any other towns, or is it all Patterson? Garfield, Elmwood Park, North Halden, Halden, and Prospect Park. So, you mentioned racism before. Yes. President Trump. Does it matter? Well, let me try it this way. Mm. Do you think President Trump has contributed in a positive way to social discourse <laughs> around race? I think that's a, a nice way of saying that. Um, do you think he's a racist? I do not think the president, as the CEO of a great nation, has done enough to <clears throat> uh, unite our United States. <clears throat> has are, he done enough to divide? Um, the, has he divided? The discourse that we face is when we don't speak out as leaders. When you're in a leadership position, you do have that authority and that obligation, I believe, to represent the unity of all and respect for others, especially others of different race and different cultures. Uh, to pit one against the other or not speak out at all, that's a disservice not only to our country but to your oath of office. It, I'm going to follow up one more time. <laughs> when the president said there are good people on both sides in connection with a very highly publicized and polarizing set of incidents, tiki torches, people who are white nationalists, others who are protesting, good people on both sides. Does that help the discussion? Steve, it doesn't help the discussion, but what I am encouraged by is young people who are speaking out, young people who are uniting arm in arm. Even our Jewish youth are speaking out about mm. the swastikas and, and a insensitivity to their story. The same must be said for the African-American plight in this country, as well as any other immigrant who are fleeing uh, uh, detrimental circumstances, not because they don't have love of country or home, but because it's dangerous. There's human trafficking, there's death, there's torture. Let's make sure we have a pathway to citizenship as it has been for generations before us. And Patterson, one of the most diverse communities Absolutely. in the nation, not just the state. Uh, Shavonda Sumter is a leader in the state legislature. She is a vice president at Hackensack UMC Mount Set Hospital. Uh, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Steve. Well done. Always a pleasure. We'll be right back right after this. State of Affairs with Steve Adubato is a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 30 years of broadcast excellence. State of Affairs with Steve Adubato is brought to you from the Agnes Veris NJTV studio at 2 Gateway. Funding has been provided by the Turrell Fund, supporting right from the start NJ, Johnson & Johnson, NJM Insurance Group, International Union of Operating Engineers, Local 825, Fedway Associates, Keystone Mountain Lakes Regional Council of Carpenters, Suez, and by these public-spirited organizations, individuals, and associations committed to informing New Jersey citizens about the important issues facing the Garden State. And by Employers Association of New Jersey.